Hi. I, uh, you've been waiting to say something, so, yes. Um, words, just, words just complicate. And using words, we're using our intellect. Using our intellect. How can we explain this? How well has it done so far? Um, yeah, I think the second half, definitely more. Yes. But your question wants no answer. There is no answer, and there is no word to your question. Yes. yes. Um, but yeah, we're always intellectualizing and trying well, to find and actually find by intellectualizing. It's not so bad. We came into a state <coughs> of multiplicity, of confusion, through the addition of concepts. And so it will take concepts to, to deconstruct other concepts. There's a saying in India, we were talking about it, that if you step on a thorn and it breaks off into your foot, you might take another thorn to remove the first thorn. And then when you remove the first thorn, you throw both thorns away. So some concepts are necessary in order to reveal the shallowness, the shallowness of other concepts. So some concepts, they take you into more noise, into the mind. And some concepts, which are graced by a deeper realization, they have a way of diffusing these um, other concepts. And leaving you, they take you back to emptiness, you see. At best, the words or the concepts can only be a sort of a mirroring to that which cannot be seen in a mirror, you see. You don't really want an answer to your most important question, do you? No, I want a response. I don't even I want it. No. It's not even that I want it, you see. <laughs> it begs for maybe something happens to this question. This is why I say I don't want your answer, you see. don't want your answer because your answer is going to be a lie. It's not true. So immediately we're throwing it. I'm not even going to smell it. I'm throwing it out, you see. So you have seen it quite rightly that to, there is no answer satisfactorily to this question. You cannot put a word, even the word, as you said before, emptiness. The minute no, no, you no, say no, it, no, no, you no, already no, no, no. create... Be careful, be careful, because if you do that, then you make your mind into an enemy. The mind can help you. Just like the mind causes confusion, mind also will help to reflect this. There is the, 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 the self is reflected in a clean intellect, in fact, because the intellect, mind, is not different from the self. They arise from the same source, you see. This is why you may say, no mind. Another one says, clear mind. Another yeah. one says, whatever. Yeah. But it all points to the same thing. What it means, egoless mind. Because upon recognizing who you are, mind will still function. But simply it will be in service to that, you see. <laughs> you see, this is it. Because otherwise, you know, you will be from time to time still using words like, you will still have to speak because the vital force is here. You will still have to bring your children up. You'll have to speak with them and so on. What are you going to say? No, from now on, I don't speak. Or I don't use I. I don't use I. You see, you, you cannot help it. But some deeper understanding now is informing all the other expressions are going to be somehow blessed by that deeper realization, you see. Then you may say conversations at the word level, at the verbal level, at the intellectual level, they have served their purpose properly because they now are throwing you back clearly onto that which cannot be touched by words. See, there are some beings that are yourself also at a certain stage probably that you may say you may have satsang in silence because that will be perhaps the highest teaching if you want to call it a teaching. But one has to be mature and evolved for a satsang of silence. So until then we use words and those words that are somehow infused by a deeper understanding, they have a certain, a certain authority and grace in them, and they help to empty other words of content, you see. And at a certain point, it becomes, uh, 
you will not use words um, in a kind of complacent manner. I don't want to even say that, you know, because I want to say actually you can speak anything you want, in fact. It will come out any way it wants because it's not going to corrupt this. This is the point I want to make. There comes a point in your own seeing where nothing can corrupt this. In fact, even now nothing can corrupt it, but you're under the impression that there's something can corrupt it. And so if you believe that, you believe it into existence and it becomes operative for you. So I hope by somehow you're right that the second half uh, of this time together has really somehow been more satisfying because we have to sometimes cut through, cut through the jungle a little bit to get to, to, get to it. But um, I am also um, pleased by that, that somehow we arrived at a certain place and can feel it also in your energy, in, so, in fact. That something, in just listening, you see, without any sadhana, without any practice, without climbing a mountain or sitting in a cave, just in somehow in your own deep understanding and intuitive listening, something has been spring cleaned out. And what remains is that which cannot be taken away. Stay there. You see. So, Thank you. Okay, thank you.